So it looks like the hammer is finally coming down on Michigan. Not a sledgehammer, mind you, more of a little, you know, a ball peen hammer, one with the, the rubber mallet on the end that you use for, for trim nail, a small hammer that you might find it in a, in a, in a toy box with other toys because it's more like a, a, a toy hammer that it's coming down. It's going to hit Michigan. It's going to hit them not hard necessarily, but Welcome to the Big Ten Team Rivalry Show, where we cover the Big Ten from a Michigan perspective with expert trash talk and unrivaled analysis. My name is Cliff. His name is Mac. Let's get into it. Mac, we tried a whole bunch of intros there. We really were just trying to have fun with this because this is a fascinating article from from Chris Bayless. Uh, Fascinating, meaning fun and kind of cool for us as Michigan fans. But we got to back up because we're talking about uh, the allegation not the allegations what do you call that the level one notice of allegations notice of allegations yeah notice of allegations from the ncaa to michigan but let me back up and tell you how we got here i know everybody knows i know this is old news but i really got to cover it because because you got to know where we're coming from on this but we go back to the middle of the 2023 season when the news broke that michigan had broken the rules with uh, a sign stealing scheme uh, where they were uh, scouting uh, future opponents by sending, uh, well, it, we really didn't know at the time when they first started saying it. It was just that they were going to future opponents from Michigan uh, and getting their signs and then reporting back and putting those into their playbook so that they could, you know, know the signs before uh, the other teams even gave them. And there's been all kinds of talk on that, all kinds of, you know, does it even work? Does it even help anything? Um, in the process, Connor Stallions was fired. Chris Partridge was fired for, uh, uh, telling, <laughs> telling the kids on the team, telling the guys on the team to, to not say things they didn't know about, but that got turned into, oh, he's destroying evidence that never happened. So this has been a huge mess from the beginning, but rivals have repeated the mantra. The hammer is coming down and it might finally be here or at least very close what does the punishment look like? If any, are we talking about vacated wins? Are we talking about an asterisk on the championship? And here comes the article from Chris Bayless. And, and essentially we're just, let's just hit the points from this. And, and it basically says, I'm going to let it right out of the bag, right off the bat. Michigan will not have any wins vacated. So Mac, Boom. what, what do you think? How does, how do fans respond to this? How do, how do rivals respond to this? What do you got? Hmm. Well, the rivals are coping and seething. They're very upset. <laughs> They're all very upset. Lots of tears. Lots of tears. Uh, I heard there was some flooding happening in Columbus. Uh, I just want to say I, I really hope everybody's okay. Uh, no doubt some Kleenex will be necessary. Pretty sure that's the only thing that could help clean up that flood. Uh, East Lansing, I'm, I, I've come to understand is, uh, currently burning to the ground. Uh, there isn't well, a couch left. They do that all the time anyway. Yeah. But this time they really got all the couches. The couches are all gone now. They've, <laughs> they've taken out all the couches. They're starting to hit the armchairs. Ooh. Yeah. And what's, what about what's the Adirondacks? Next? Are they, they taking oh, out the Adirondack my. chairs? They're next. <laughs> They're next. <laughs> The rivals are in shambles, man. This is terrible for them. You know, we heard for so long, the hammer is coming. You know, Michigan is going to get slapped with all sorts of level one violations. And only two guys are getting level one violations. And it's because Connor Stallions did something that the NCAA back in 2019-ish themselves said wasn't actually even that big of a deal and didn't provide a competitive advantage, which, mind you, is a part of the definition for the level one violation, provides or intended to provide a competitive advantage. It doesn't do that according to them. So what are we doing here, guys? But then the other guy who's getting the level one violation is because he bought a kid an entree. Let's pretend it was a cheeseburger. Or no, no, if he's going to get a level one violation, then he had to have bought him freaking good steak. He got him a New York strip steak with A1 sauce. No, that makes it it trashy. It's a good yeah, steak. 
A good steak doesn't need A1 sauce. A good steak doesn't need A1 sauce. And this steak was worth the level one violation that he got for it. Guys, what are we doing here? This is ridiculous. This is the NCAA. The NCAA has got dying star uh, syndrome, you know, where they're, they know that they're dying. And so they're doing one last, eh, maybe I'll do something. And then they just collapse in on themselves and burn. And it's all very sad for them. And I think they know that they're dying. We talked about this in, in the video we recorded for Voice of College Football. I think the NCAA knows that they're dying, uh, but it's too late. They can't do anything about it. And so they're just trying to get one last dig in. And it's not, they don't even have the guts to put forth a notice of allegations that follows through on all of the allegations that they were hinting at over the course of the last season. I mean, they were saying this is the this is a massive sign stealing network the fbi was involved i think at one point um well that was for a completely separate incident though okay well there you go yeah um player safety i remember was was called into question michigan state there was a rumor that they were going to uh boycott the game which they ended up doing anyway apparently (laughs) (laughs) so because they got zero because they got nothing. <laughs> Connor Stallions gets fired, and Michigan has to play their hardest games of the season after losing them, and they still win. They yeah. still win. And people after the Rose Bowl, I mean, up to the Rose Bowl, oh, they don't have Connor Stallions. They don't have the sign stealer. Alabama's going to mop the floor with them. And then Michigan, Michigan actually walked away from the, from the Rose Bowl. There was an anecdote that one of the coaches told, I think it was Isaiah Hull. One of the coaches told Isaiah Hull, um, that they feel like they they felt like they should have won the Rose Bowl by a lot, a lot more. That game should not have been close. And honestly, he's kind of right. Alabama really didn't play that well on offense, and Michigan kind of shot themselves in the foot a few times. For as great as that game was, and as great as Michigan's comeback was, that final drive and then OT, holy crap, that was amazing. But then they they utterly dominate college football's best uh, offense in the national championship, but no, the hammer's still coming because obviously they cheated. No, they didn't. And now, and now even the NCAA is saying, no, they didn't. It was one guy. He did one thing that was kind of stupid and that's it. Well, and, and yeah, as you pointed out, Connor Stallions is getting the level one violation for the in-person scouting. They've got the, as you said, the, the other guy is getting uh, a, a level one violation for the, for the entree. Mm-hmm. What I'm what I'm realizing here, and I don't know if this means that they're holding something back or if this is really it, but there's no violation for Harbaugh. There's no violation for Sharon Moore. There's no violation for the OC and the DC. Well, Sharon Moore was the OC, uh, yeah. but but there's no violations for those guys. So do, do you think, I mean, is the NCAA holding anything back? I know in the, in the article, Chris Bayless doesn't seem to allude to that. So they must really, it must really just come down to Connor Stallion's got overzealous and did this all on his own yeah i i don't know i don't think that they're holding anything back they already got harbaugh on the cheeseburger gate um incident they got him on the recruiting violations that happened during the covid dead period which i mean what are we doing guys you want to talk about recruiting violations georgia hello but no we're not we're not gonna well go ahead i'm sorry but no, we're not going to look into them at all. So that's that's fine. Whatever. Mm-hmm. They've they've already got Harbaugh for everything that they could possibly get evidence and evidence for, and that evidence that they have for for Burgergate and for for the the COVID uh, dead period violations is flimsy at best. Mm-hmm. But they they wanted to get him for something. It feels a lot like they wanted to get him for something, and so they they said, oh well, he bought him a, a cheeseburger. And then he lied about it. It could have very well been that he just didn't know that he committed a violation and said, no, I didn't commit a violation. I don't know what you're talking about. And the NCAA can then say, well, you bought him a cheeseburger. That's a benefit. Then you said you didn't do it. That's a lie. So now level one violation for you too, buddy. (laughs) That's where we're at right now. Right. And that COVID dead period, I forgot about that one. That one drives me nuts because the reason they say COVID dead period is because under normal circumstances, any other year, that was not a dead period. So when you got a guy as regimented as Harbaugh, I, I mean, it it makes sense to me. I would, any coach, I would think there probably were a lot more coaches that violated that dead period because they forgot that it was an extra dead period because of COVID. 
Yeah, why why are we there's 138 or 130 some odd teams in FBS and Harbaugh mm-hmm. was the only one to have contacted a recruit during the COVID dead period? Yeah, that seems a little off. Now, I I don't know if that's entirely true. I'm not paying attention to a lot of the other conferences. Maybe there was something somewhere, but certainly none of them have been as publicized as this one. Right. So it everything feels a lot like the NCAA had a vendetta against Jim Harbaugh. That's that's how this yeah. looks right now. And if you read the notice of allegations, or rather, if you if you read the article by Chris Ballas, well, where he's talking about the notice of allegations. Literally, there's a part in it where he says that some believed the NCAA is looking to make an example out of Michigan for what the association believes was Michigan thumbing its nose at them throughout the investigation. Because Michigan that Michigan did, and they had every right to, because they knew, everyone knew, the NCAA doesn't have anything. It was Connor Stellians. He, did, he was one guy who did something kind of stupid, but wasn't even, by the NCAA's own admission, what didn't even provide a competitive advantage. So, of course, Michigan's going to thumb their nose right. at the NCAA, but then the NCAA gets embarrassed, and so they have to react accordingly because they're a bunch of pansies. That's what they yep. do. Yeah, the, the whole sign stealing, as we've talked about, as many people have talked about, you, you have the potential of running, and I think, uh, not P.J. Flick, uh, Penn State's coach. James Franklin. James Franklin. Well, uh, James Franklin had pointed out at one point that they have pointed out at one point that they have uh, something like 600 to 700 plays. When you include all of the variations to the different plays, that's about how many you end up with. Mm -hmm. And you run, uh, what are they saying now? 50 to 60 snaps per game. So out of 700, let's say 600 potential plays, you run 60 of them, which means you're only running, you're only showing, revealing 10% of your plays. So if you scout that team, you see 10% of their plays, what are the odds that they're going to use those same plays by the time they play you? And it just doesn't seem like there's a, a, a matchup there that would allow for any competitive advantage. And as we've said, you can't maintain the sustained dominant success that Michigan has had from, from 21, 22 and 23 by, by sign stealing. Now sign stealing does have an advantage from the standpoint that as a competitive team, you want to get absolutely any Intel you can, even if it's, you know, one extra play. Sure. You want that Intel. So that's why I think that Connor Stallions is, is the, the, point man here because he was just he was overzealous he was trying to get any kind of information he could because he was the super fan who wanted to impress the school so that he could eventually be the coach i mean i think that's what this this boils down to and and if and if if connor stallings is the only one well the only one of two with this other guy this unnamed coach the one getting at level one violations it seems like that's true but let's get into the other point in here was this potential postseason ban now, when, when we talk about the CFP committee has already said that they're not taking this into account and, and they're not beholden to the NCAA, I mean, what, what does a postseason ban look like? If Michigan doesn't go to the playoffs, then, then they get a postseason ban. But there's 12 seeds. It's pretty easy to go to the, to go to the playoffs for them right now. I mean, they've, even this year, they're talking Michigan might get three losses and still end up in the CFP. Mm-hmm. So it's just a, it's a joke. It's just an absolute joke. The the only punishment that the NCAA could find the gumption to actually hand to Michigan for something that isn't even actually an issue is one that it's it's a punishment that's not even really going to affect Michigan. Yeah. And that's just all there is to it. One of the last things Chris Bayless talks about in that article is that the the NCAA the that Michigan might not even bring their response to these infractions until mid 2025. So we could be looking at another year before Michigan even goes to the NCAA and says, here's what we think about what you said. I mean, what, what happens in the meantime? What, what, what are we looking at? (laughs) Another year of, Oh, Michigan's trying their best to avoid the hammer because they know it's coming. They know the hammer's coming. (laughs) Hammer's not coming guys. 
we just we need to let this go. I'm honestly like I I thought that it would be hilarious to continue talking about this and trigger Ohio State fans. It's actually yeah. getting kind of dumb. Like I'm getting bored. Yeah. Like, let's let's talk about some football. You know. You know, and and I honestly I think the reason it's getting dumb and it's getting boring is because everybody's starting to realize that it was nothing. And and they've been complaining about nothing. And I mean, I saw an article the other day where where they were trying to say that lives were ruined. Um, you know, kids' careers were ruined because Michigan stole signs. And I'm like, no, that's not. No. <laughs> you, I mean, as, as we've said, sign stealing is not illegal. They've been doing it anyway. Uh, it, it, what Connor Stallions did at best would have garnered them, I mean, a couple of more plays. So... It, it, it's nothing that would have changed the game. It's and right. as, as we're seeing in these, this allegations, the notice of allegations from the NCAA, Connor Stallions is the only one involved. And if he's the only one, if, if they even think he was the only one involved, then there's just no way that it affected any of the games. Even so, like everybody wants to um, harp on Michigan for this, but if you ask most people what they think about Nick Saban, they'll say, oh, he was a cheater. Well, nobody was calling for the hammer for them. Right. I, so why are we all of a sudden, why is Michigan getting, why are these allegations against Michigan getting blown out of proportion and in a highly publicized way, but literally everyone and their mother believes Nick Saban was the biggest cheater to walk the planet. And yet he's still considered the best head coach ever. Yeah. And the NCAA hasn't done anything about Alabama and they're cheating. There's no allegations. There's nothing. Yeah. So what are we doing? I mean, I guess the only thing I could say to that is that because we're not in the SEC, we don't see like the day-to-day fan base. We're here in Big Ten country. We see the day-to-day fan base reacting to to Big Ten games, Big Ten teams. Um, obviously, the the triangle of Michigan, Ohio State, and Michigan State is is you know a ring of fire that we see the 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 trash talk gets absolutely out of hand. It gets nasty. It gets it gets crazy, yeah. and so it that that triangle, that ring of fire there, more than more so than a triangle, that ring of fire there it has just turned into it's gone past rivalry banter to I want to see your school burn to the ground. And so I, I think a lot of that is kind of like a, a, a regional bias. But yeah. we do have the rumors of the NCAA, you know, the couple of guys at the NCAA who have it in for Harbaugh or had it in for Harbaugh. So who knows? Well, thanks for watching, everybody. Thanks for subscribing. Let us know what you think. Uh, leave a comment below, like and subscribe. Uh, if you want to see more great college football stories like this, give the show a like. And while you're at it, slide to the left and subscribe, which I just said twice which means it was important. Not a mistake. It was never a mistake on my part. It was no. to signify the importance of liking and subscribing. You can also catch us live on the Big Ten Team Rivalry Show Monday nights at 8 p.m. right here on YouTube. Mac, take us out. This is the Big Ten Team Rivalry Show. Shoot. Let me let me say that differently because I didn't say that right. The alleged, but we're already... We're already off to a great start. I got to start over. Can we start over? I'm sorry. I got to start over. We got to start. I'm sorry. <laughs> well, not all of the hammer. <laughs> no, that doesn't work. <laughs> <laughs> Just some of the hammer. I, okay. No, I got a better idea. All right, here we go. So it looks like the hammer is finally coming down on Michigan. Not a sledgehammer, mind you, more of a one of those little ball peen hammers that has the soft rubber mallet on the end. The you know the you know what I mean. The soft the, a trim hammer. Not a not a big hammer, a small hammer that to, We need a script for the next one. <laughs> probably do. <laughs> yeah, let's just talk for a couple of minutes. Okay. Ooh. Sam Hartman's looking downfield for Adrian. Oh! Carter almost has a one-handed catch. Almost. <laughs>